Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. Today in this video, we are going to see how to install Cisco uh, WLC 9800 cloud version on your local desktop, uh, given you have sufficient amount of resources available. Uh, in my previous video, you have seen how to install 9800CL on a server, ESXi server. Now in this case, I'm going to start a new video series on wireless and we will see how you can install it on a, a workstation uh, by some virtualization and then start using connecting your APs and then your end, uh, end host to that WLC. So as you can see, 9800CL is supported on various platforms, VMware, KVM, Microsoft and public clouds like AWS and Google. So uh, let's understand what is our requirement or the platform here. So as you can see VMware, let's do, take a step back and understand the VMware offering. So VMware has uh, three or I would say four offerings, right? The very first one is uh, ESXi. And I think uh, the ESXi is now rebranded as vSphere. So I looked at the VMware portfolio and I wanted to look at ESXi, but I couldn't find any ESXi. A little bit of research tell me that this is now vSphere. So this is the uh, ESXi, which goes on a bare metal um, server, maybe a Cisco UCS server. This is not our case, right? VMware Fusion, Fusion, Fusion is for Mac OS. So you can definitely use VMware Fusion if you are using, uh, if you have a Mac, MacBook and you want to install EWLC on that. In my case, I have a Windows a workstation which has good amount of resource and that's where I want to install uh, EWLC. So I have, I am left with two choices essentially. One is VMware workstation player and uh, another is uh, VMware workstation pro. So you can think of like a pro is a little bit uh, uh, more capable enterprise kind of version and player is a lighter one okay so in my case i'm going to use vmware workstation pro so let's uh, understand what is the software we need to download so if you go to cisco software you will see the latest one is bengaluru 1751 at this time of recording and there are a couple of variants available for this 9800 cl crowd wireless controller right so you have a regular bin file uh, like iOS XE file. And then you have ISO, you have OVA. So this is the OVA if you are using a ESXi install, this is the software you need to use, right? If it is a KVM, then it's obviously the format should be QCOW2. In our case, we are going to use ISO install. Just like, so we are going to spin up a virtual machine uh, using a ISO image, just like any virtual uh, machine but in this case it is going to be application or appliance called wireless controller so this is the software i have downloaded and now let's go to our server or workstation so as you can see i am running workstation 16 pro and here what you can do you can simply say click on new virtual machine and as you can see, I have already this EWLC suspend uh, in suspended state. So I have one EWLC already running, running. but if you have to come here and uh, start a new, then all you have to do is new virtual machine. And I can say typical. Check uh, the ISO image. So the downloaded ISO image you need to uh, select here. In this case, I am just selecting CentOS uh, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, this is not available. Let me check if I have. Yeah, okay, let's use this. Okay. which operating system in this disk image you will need to specify which operating system okay fine we are going to say the underlying operating system is linux and version you can pick anything uh, any linux version 
but make sure you pick 68 uh, 64 bit right so this is what we will see and then next and virtual machine name so you can name it obviously i'm not going to spin up another virtual machine but for demo purposes ewlc the path uh, virtual machine ewlc is already exists so let's make call it ewc1 you need to specify the disk size uh, 20 gb uh, anything above 16 gb is good okay uh, but 20 gb is recommended as you can see and store virtual disk as a single file or split virtual disk as a multiple file i would recommend use as a single file next and this is what you can see here uh, this is the default or typical configuration but we need to customize it so let's say customize hardware uh, the first thing what you would like to do is come to memory and give it uh, 8 gb of memory so you can slide it okay so this is now 8 gb let's go to processor give it four cores so one processor four core you need at least four cores and you don't need uh, uh, virtual virtualize these things options all right network adapter you need three network adapter for ewlc one for management one for data uh, connection um, and one for if you are running high availability that means if you have two ewlc's uh, in in a ha mode then you need the third third interface so right now you can see with typical installation i have only one network adapter that is in by default is in nat mode so i am going to change it to bridge and say replicate physical network connection state uh, i am going to add two more network connections network adapter add one more network adapter make all three of them as bridge bridge so now you can see i have network adapter 2 is in bridge network adapter 3 and network all of them are in 3 so 8 gb 4 processor 3 network uh, adapters and 20 gb of hard disk that's all i need for my uh, virtual machine i can say close and then i can say finish to create this virtual machine but anyways i'm not going to create um, i just wanted to walk you through the flow so i'm going to cancel it and let's review one which is working here so let's go to the settings or uh, actually let me cancel out here you can see all the settings the same thing what we discussed right now memory 8 gb processor 4 uh, and hard disk uh, 20 gb three network adapter all in bridge mode all right the one thing which i want to take a note before you go ahead and start your uh, ewlc is okay let me power it down power off yes i want to power it off go to edit and look at virtual network adapter right so as you can see i have vmnet1 vmnet3 and you have you need to add, provide administrative privileges so i'm going to say change setting yes i want to make changes and now you can see all three vmnet which we added for this ewlc they are shown here so you can use or select the right interface which you want to bridge so for a like for example here i want to bridge this uh, ethernet connection for my management then the second one i want to bridge something which is my data connection and then third one probably i leave it blank um, because i don't have ha so basically here in virtual network edit, uh, editor you need to perform the mapping of your virtual nic to the physical nic right because our adapters are in bridge mode and that's that's where you need to perform this uh, mapping manually under edit virtual network editor all right so i have done uh, perform that mapping already and then you can what you can do you can just go ahead and power it up i'm going to say startup guest boot with package.conf as you know this is going to be boot uh, this is going to boot in install mode so 
it will boot from package.conf and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expand this window so that we can look at the logs together okay Initialization of WLC, uh, there is already one video available, um, which is like a day zero configuration of EWLC. You can watch that. So we will not uh, go go there. I just, the purpose of this video is to get you started uh, at home. If you have any uh, workstation or laptop with sufficient resource, you can run this 9800 at home. And obviously you need AP. Um, so that you can connect your client. Okay, so this is booting right now. Okay. As you can see, one virtual ethernet interface and three gigabit ethernet interface so it has detected my configuration uh, the nic and other configuration i supplied as part of vmware uh, virtual machine creation and installation mode is installed okay now it is trying to do pnp this is a good time we can uh, uh, start playing around with configuration. So you can see I've got the WLC prompt here. And if I do enable, pardon the config, spelling mistake here. Still booting. So I'm trying to send an interrupt, but it's taking some time. If you want to come out, press Ctrl and Alt together, and then your cursor will be free from this. Let's go and try to send interrupt again. Now it will time out itself. Okay. So this is how you can actually spin up your virtual machine. While this is uh, booting, let's take a look at some of the settings. You can see this is the ISO image uploaded. Okay, this back, prompt is back, enable, show IP, INT, brief. You can see I have three interfaces and one VLAN interface and everything is up. One caveat which I want to highlight is sometime, even if you locate your VNIC, three VNICs, and, and do the bridging and other virtual to physical mapping, you will still see that configuration doesn't have this interfaces show up. So when you do show run, you will see everything except <clears throat> the interfaces. Like in my case, you can see I have all three interfaces. So for that, be aware, sometime it can happen because the caveat is, all this VNIC, they need to use v, uh, VMNet, uh, VMNet 3 adapter. So where you can validate that, you can validate that, get out of here and go to the place where this VMDK or VMX file is stored. So you need to open the VMX file and open it in TextPad, right? And here is the complete config of this EWLC. Search with virtual dev. Okay. 
Control F, not Command F. Yeah, search with virtual dev. You can see I have the virtual dev four, five, six, seven, and they are all set to PCI root port true. But this is not what I am interested in. Keep on searching. This is the part. Sometime it is missing in configuration. So this, when you try to spin up in workstation, EWLC in workstation, you will see that you are not finding any uh, interfaces because Ethernet 0 dot virtual dev equal to VMX net 3. This three lines are missing in your config file. So if that is the case with you, go ahead, edit the VMX configuration file and save it. Once you edit the configuration file, save it, and then you are going to reboot your EWLC. After that, you can see the interfaces will start showing up in EWLC as expected. So this is our EWLC available and ready for day zero configuration. So I'm going to assign the IP addresses on uh, required interfaces, and then we will start playing around, uh, around and start using the GUI interface of it, uh, onboard a couple of APs, and then we will start broadcasting some SSIDs so that a couple of my Raspberry Pis, they can join the network. And then we will talk about more about the wireless uh, in this video series. So I hope uh, you can follow along with me. If you have a, a workstation resources and VMware li uh, license and uh, use it at home. Yeah, thank you.